guys, it's podcast day. Yay. Welcome to Inspired. I believe this is episode 23. I am Kamiko, your host, and it is Wednesday, January 16th, 2019. I believe it's the 16th. And yes, I think I have a better setup. I'm in the same location as always, because that's pretty much all I have, but my lighting is better. I'm using my iPhone this time. Um, I was using a little point and shoot Samsung digital camera that I've had for like four years. So I'm thinking it's not very good quality. I played around with it and I just couldn't get it to look better after I edited the previous video last week. Um, so I'm trying to use the, sorry, itchy nose. I'm trying to see how the I iPhone goes. It's a good iPhone. Um, already I can tell that the lighting looks better, but it's also pretty sunny out today. So I think that helps. And this, the lighting might go up and down because of the sun. It's like half cloudy, semi cloudy, partly cloudy. <laughs> I'm no meteorologist, but anyway, I hope you are well. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes to hang out with me. Um, yeah. And yeah, if you're a new reviewer, then this is going to be fun. And if you're a returning viewer, then thank you so much. And yay, I'm back in a week. Can you believe that? That's probably the first time I've done this. And I told you I was going to meet you back here in a week, and I did. And I have thought about you guys all week. Whoever's watching, I've thought about you guys. And um, I wanted to have some content and some stuff finished. And I... Oh, wow. That is something you never hear out in the country is a paramedic and a paramedic just drove right by. Anyway, uh, yeah, I think what I was saying is that I always think I knit really fast and then in a week I'm like, well, what did I do? I knit all week and I have nothing to show for it. But I guess I, I've, I've got some stuff to show for it. So I've, yeah, you know what? I do. So anyway, <laughs> I have, um, I'll show you my first finished object that I showed you last week it was still a work in progress and it finished and I don't think you could see the coloring last week and I still don't have the ball band with me so I can't really tell you what the colorway is but it's lion lion brand yarn the sock ease I believe and it's like you can get it at um Michael's um so yeah these were um socks for my husband and I did end up giving that's the water pump I did end up giving the socks to him and he actually said he forgot that I was knitting any, or he forgot that I had tried something on his foot. So that was pretty cool. He was really happy. He put them on right away and he said they felt really good, but it would probably feel weird um, to wear them a bit. And so he like for too long, like he wouldn't be able to work out in them or anything. And I said, you don't have to work out in them. You just can wear them around the house and they're nice and warm. And he thought maybe a reinforced bottom. He always has the best suggestions guys just do. So he thought the bottom, if it was reinforced more like along here, it would be great because I think he has a flatter foot. But anyway, they fit him like a sock. <laughs> um, yeah, they fit him. So they, these, this is them. And yes, you can definitely see them a lot better this time. I wish I had sock blockers that they fit on. And I think I'm going to have to buy some large sock blockers for um, if I'm going to make bigger socks because I would love to make more socks for him since they were so well received um yeah let's see if you can see the pattern on the front there's fiber and cat hair and my hair on them so yeah you can kind of see that see that little it's like a like a mini waffle rib pattern on it and then the back is just plain but yeah these are his and he wore them he even wore them to bed um, usually, um, he wears socks to bed, but, <laughs> um, I didn't think he would wear these to bed and he did, but yes, they're finished. I'm so proud of them. They're, they're really nice and I have not written them up like a hundred percent yet, but they will definitely go in up for just a, a really easy pattern. Oh, a free pattern. Can't talk. Um, yes. Also, I just finished this one up this morning. This is one that will be for sale in the Etsy shop, which is not open yet. It, it's just a fun little cable rib hat. And this, I believe, is a baby size. I did not even put the pom-pom on yet, but here it is. Super cute. This, um, the ones I showed last week were tiny, so they were like a newborn size. Probably would fit up to about three months. And I think 
this could fit up to a year because it's like it's nice and stretchy but yeah I'm gonna put hats like this up for sale I also made a hat for myself because I had this yarn and I don't have the tag but it's yarn that I bought when I was up in Thunder Bay Ontario about a year and a half ago I was with my sister-in-law and it was on sale and it was 100% wool Peruvian wool I believe it's Remember the tag I don't even know where the tag is I'm not even gonna go worry about it but it's um a hundred percent wool and then the the um, pom-pom on top is also it's just like Canadian Cana um, patents Canadian wool or wool or something like that but anyway I thought it would be a really cool um, contrast the bright purple I mean the bright pink pom-pom on the hat and it's just a simple two by two rib for an inch and a half uh, maybe 15 rows I don't know and it looks the the color actually looks really cool um, it's really it's really picking it up I actually don't think it's that bright like this the the change isn't as noticeable from far away yes it is anyway it's really cool it's got it is okay it is wow um, it's like grays light grays kind of a mauvey gray and then it just goes back up it's kind of a stripe yeah, and it's a very slouchy hat. I'm not going to put it on right now because I don't want to keep playing with my hair because when I edit and I see my see me playing with my hair, it drives me nuts and I can't imagine what you must think. So I'm not going to be playing with my hair. So I'm not going to put this on. But I'm very happy with that. It's a nice, easy hat. I think I made it in like a day. Sorry, my voice is going. And my leg is falling asleep. What else is done? Um... Let's see. Oh, yeah. So I talked about this a while ago, and this is my daughter Nadia's flax light sweater, and I never showed it, and it's wrinkly because it was in the drawer. Oh, where am I looking? Here we go. It's a little wrinkled. She hasn't actually worn it out yet, but someday I'll sneak it on her. <laughs> it's actually pretty soft, but she's, you know, she's a four and a half year old kid, and they're kind of fussy about how things feel. But that is the, the flax light sweater. The Yellow is a single merino by Leo and Roxy. And I think it's called the pollen colorway. And then the the contrasting, which is the the collar, the cuffs, and then the ribbing at the bottom. That is mine. That is my own dyed yarn. Just something I was playing around with, but um let's see if that side super cute and it's the flex light sweater I don't know if I said that by tin can knits and I love the little detail everybody knows this sweater everybody's knit this sweater I love the detail on the sleeve it's super cute I'm kind of thinking about making one for myself maybe like a nice oversized sweater because I'm kind of feeling like that would be nice for me to wear but yeah that's that's hers and I also think I talked about this sweater I made for her but I didn't ever show it and it was actually just knit out of a Bernat a cheap Bernat acrylic yarn that I found at Michael's but I really liked the colorway and it's not she doesn't usually wear these colors she's more like pinks and like <coughs> excuse me like girly stuff I guess you would say and I thought this would look really cute in a sweater because she's got these big blue eyes um, and anyway this is my own pattern and it's just a simple cardigan top down um, just not much decreasing in the sleeves and then actually the ribbing starts pretty high up so it gives like a little shape to it and I still have not put the buttons on but I have them and um, I look all serious now sorry but yeah that's that's her sweater and it's super cute and she does wear that one and the very first time I put it on her to try it on her um, she was super excited and she goes "Ooh, cozy because the arms and I think it was in the summer so she was or like in the fall where it was still um, pretty warm outside so <clears throat> to feel the warm it is soft to feel the warm soft yarn on her she liked that so maybe I just have to stick with cheap yarns for her because they're they tend like the the baby stuff seems to be a lot softer and it's very well it wears really well and she's really rough on her clothes so yeah I don't know 
So those are things, those are old finished objects. Um, what else? Oh, okay. I'm not sure if I should save this till the end. I'm going to save this till the end because it is a finished object, but it's not technically knitting. It's not knit. It's, it has to do with knitting, and I think if you follow me on Instagram, you know what I'm talking about. But, um, yeah. So I'm going to talk about my works in progress, and I don't think I've... I started something new, which I didn't really need to do, but I did it anyway because... I didn't have any socks on the needles, so I needed to put more socks on my needles, and I actually started these. I posted these on Instagram the other night, and I've gotten this much farther. So it's two at a time, which I never do, but I decided last time I made socks, um, the ones I made for my husband, I was going to try doing two at a time socks again, which I like because you don't, um, you get them both done at the same time, and I don't feel like it takes that much longer. I'm sure it does, though. Are you playing? My cat is sitting right here with me. I thought she was playing with the yarn, but she's not. But anyway, these are two at a time socks, just a plain pattern. And this is um, the front. You like my little bread tags? <laughs> That's my knitting hack. It wraps up the yarn at the bottom. And um, we eat a lot of English muffins, so we have a lot of bread tags. <laughs> and um, so yeah, I use them to just wrap up the yarn at the bottom that I haven't woven in yet. But And these are actually top down. So I have already done the Fish Lips Kiss Heel. And now I'm on the foot. And these are from my daughter, my older daughter, my oldest daughter. And it's a surprise. She does not watch the podcast. Um, I would be really surprised if she did. But I wanted to make her some socks and these are made for, I found this yarn at Lens Mill which I've talked about before it's basically just a big dirty junk store with cheap stuff for the home and everything and arts and crafts and stuff but they do have a lot of yarn and this is the James C. Brett Funny Feats and I have never seen that this yarn before it is um 75% superwash wool and 25% polyamide. What color is it? The color. Oh, this is a cute color. FZ03. That was creative. But I like that it's called Funny Feats. That's cute. So these are my Funny Feats socks for Tatum. Yay, Tatum socks. Not to be confused with the Tatey Lady socks, which are a pattern named after Tatum. She's going to love these, and she has no idea I'm making them for her. So that is what I've been working on, and I'm determined to finish it. Oh my goodness, maybe Izzy will make an appearance. She's playing. Izzy never plays. She's very, very shy. Do you want to say hi? Oh, she's playful. I'm just going to lift her up real quick. This is Izzy. Not to be confused with Henry. Izzy, say hi. She's not a very nice cat, but she's shy. I think she needs to... She'd be better off if it was just me and her and no child or husband around. Because she's really shy. Anyway, you don't care about my cat. <laughs> um, what else am I working on? I, that is all I'm working on. I, obviously, you know that I have um, projects that are just sitting on the needles and they need to be finished or um, ripped out. I still did not rip out my Rizzo blouse. I think I'm going to do a video on it ripping it out that and my comfort fake hardy because they are so lovely the comfort fake hardy is pretty much almost done but I'm gonna rip it out anyway because I'm not happy with the colorway I'm just gonna re-dye the yarn it's just how it is not a big deal it's in DK anyway so it knits up fast I feel like it's bulky yarn compared to fingering weight yarn and I also I'm gonna rip out the Rizzo blouse but that's only like this much of it is done so that's not a big deal but it's such pretty yarn. It's the per it's pink and tonal pink with like bright pops of pink. And it needs to be ripped out, but that was in my last episode. I'm not even gonna talk about it now, but I'll probably post a video of me ripping out my projects because that's fun. Um, my future knitting. I have talked about this before and I'm, I couldn't pull the yarn out, but I'm gonna be doing the Ohm Shawl by Andrea Mowry and I bought a lot of Cascade Heritage yarn and I believe it's worsted weight yes because it's knit on like ten and a half needles that thing's gonna just fly and I did pull up the pattern last night I haven't purchased the pattern yet but I'm going to um, I kind of want to get other projects done before I do that but I really 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 want to make it 
Um, yeah, that's the Om Shaw. Did I say Om Shaw? Om Cardigan? No, it's the Om Shaw. And it's really cool because it's super versatile and I think it'll look nice on me and um, the colors I chose are very bright and but autumn -y colors. I like colors. That is my future knitting. It, it, I'm getting there. I also, I'm not one to really follow trends. I don't think. Not, not so much. Sometimes it just irritates me, all the trends. I, I, I don't get it. But um, the no, a lot of people are, are knitting the no frills, cart, uh, the no frills sweater. I think it's just a pullover sweater. And I kind of like it. It's very, I'm not like a simple plain kind of person, but the yarn will speak for the pattern. Like the simplicity of the pattern will be overshadowed by the awesomeness of the yarn, which I still don't know what kind of yarn I'm going to use to um, and knit it in, but I definitely want to do the no frill sweater because it just looks, I think I also want to do it like an oversized because I'm feeling, feeling like wearing oversized sweaters. I think they just look comfy and, um, I wear leggings a lot, so I just want to make sure everything's covered. So having a nice oversized sweater look, would, would be great. And when I do wear jeans, it'll look great with jeans. So yeah, I can't believe how sunny it is outside. It's so nice. I love it. Um, it's really cold and really windy, but it's really sunny. Also, I am going to be knitting the, I'm reading my notes. I just didn't want to forget anything. That's why I keep looking down. I'm sorry. So I also want to be knitting, want to knit the Weekender. That is by Andrea Maui also, also. And I believe that's in Worsted Way. And I want, I was going to buy that pattern, but I didn't <laughs> because um, I was looking at the yarn for it and I want to do, I think it calls for Brooklyn Tweed and which is, I've never used before. And I really just want to make it exactly like the sample or like it's like it is in the pattern and it calls for the Brooklyn Tweed shelter, I believe. And I want to get that, but I was looking online last night and I didn't know where to get it. Um, I don't have a lot of local yarn stores like anything nearby me. So I didn't, um, I didn't know where to get it. I looked at yarncanada.com uh, and Blue Moon Fiber Arts, but I, I couldn't find it. Um, but yeah, I just want to make it like the, like the sweater in the pictures, I guess. So, and I really would like to use Brooklyn Tweed Shelter because I hear so much about it all the time and I've never worked with it and I'm curious. So I will probably wait to purchase that. That'll be in a while, but um, yeah, that is definitely something I am going to be knitting soon also. And also the Bracken Mittens, and I don't know who it's by, but Bracken Mittens, I saw, um, I was watching the Hey Sister podcast, their newest one. I was watching that this morning and Rachel made the Bracken Mittens and they're super cute. So I'm thinking I'm going to make those because I don't, I have like one pair of mittens. I have gloves, but a pair of like nice cable mittens. That was weird. A pair of cable mittens would be nice. Um, yeah. And also, I did not show this in my last podcast. I completely forgot, but we have neighbors. I don't know if you can see their house. Over there. I don't know. Can you see that? Maybe. Really awesome neighbors, and we go over there every once in a while. And of course, when we're sitting there talking, I pull out my knitting, and they're like, hey, Grandma, but they're my age. Um, no, they're just kidding. But they know that I knit, and uh, they travel a lot, and the husband said, oh, we ha I have this yarn that we got in Peru. <laughs> I'm going to give it to you. And I was like, no, you don't have to do that. And he basically, he's like, can you do something with that? And I was like, I am not taking Peruvian yarn from them. They, they, that is the water pump again. Anyway, they, um, they traveled there. I guess they bought it because they liked the way it looked and they went to like an alpaca farm. So it's, um, just, I'll show it to you. It's these, it's, um, obviously a fingering weight. As you can see it is not soft it is very workhorse they said it's from a um, there's a lot of hair and fiber in it they said it's um, from an older alpaca so it's not soft at all usually alpacas in my experience is really soft so, like I guess it's usually from baby or young alpaca this is rough but see this one's kind of like a marled gray and then this one's like a camely brown but they're natural those are the colors of the actual alpaca. And I think they saw the alpacas that, that the yarn came from, but 
apparently my neighbors, they bought it because it was really cheap. It looked really cool. And I think they were using it for decoration, but then they were like, Hey, I wonder if our neighbor can knit something for us or knit something out of it. And I said, I'll knit like a shawl, like a wrap style thing that can be like a throw for the end of the bed or for a chair or couch or whatever. So they said, here, they threw them in my face and said, here, make something. And I said, well, I'll make something for you guys. So I will. I have no idea what I'm going to make. And I think I'm going to do something that's on larger needles so that it doesn't take very long. And it's a nice, like, airy, just decorative throw because they liked the colors. So might as well make something that they can use out of it that's also decorative. My only concern, and I guess it's not a big deal since it's just going to, it's not going to be a garment. It's a throw. These are wound so tightly. They feel like those, um, the dryer, the wool dryer balls. They're so heavy. So I'm feeling like they're wound super tight. So I don't know how that is going to bode. Not really sure, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So that is um, it as far as what is finished, what I'm working on right now, um, and what I plan on doing. However, what I plan on doing is probably not what I'll cast on next because I'll just be like, let me cast on anything and I'll grab yarn and make more socks or whatever. Actually, I my next project that I am starting to cast on is my last pattern in my Sweet Child of Mine series that is not yet released, but I have to get it released. So again, I need test knitters. If you're interested, you can get in touch with me and I'm always going to be looking for test knitters anyway. So um, yeah, definitely get in touch with me. All right. So if you follow my Instagram, this is what I was talking about earlier that I said I would wait till later to show you. If you follow my Instagram, you'll know that I have been maybe dabbling in something that we like to call dyeing, like hand dyeing yarn. So, um, it's, I, I was a little, um, sheepish as to if I should share it. I feel kind of like the market's pretty saturated as far as indie dyers. They don't need somebody else. But as much as it is, I also feel like I have something really good to offer and I have my own ideas and everybody's different. So they, I follow like, I don't know, a million dyers, not that many. I follow a lot of indie dyers on Instagram and stuff and everybody does it, but everybody has their own way of doing it. Everybody has their own style. So, um, I figured why not Let, let's try it and my husband is a hundred percent behind me he he's so excited he's like he's the one that pushed me in the direction anyway because he saw that I did like it because if you remember me talking in the past I was like I could never do that and this is why you say this is why you never say never um just because it I I wasn't doing it right and it didn't my, the results were not um what I expected <sighs> And, oh man, I've been working out again. I'm really sore, so I have to move around a little bit. Um, anyway, so never say never. So I tried quite a few different things and then I looked up a bunch of tutorials and I tried that and they still didn't come out, my yarn still didn't come out right. And you'll know that a couple months ago I was doing some dyeing and it started to come together and I learned new techniques. And I kind of had to learn stuff myself because you can watch so many tutorials and listen to so many other people who do hand dyeing and indie dyeing. And they're not going to tell you everything they do because they had to learn it themselves. If they told you, you know what I mean? If they told you how to do it, then I guess maybe everybody's thing, everybody's finished products would be the same. But everybody has their own techniques and their own style and whatever. So I had to I had to figure it out myself and I did. And once I figured it out a little bit more and I'm still learning, um it just worked and it clicked and my husband saw how happy I was with it. So he's like, let's just just do it. Okay, just do it. So I did. And my first ones, if you have not seen me on Instagram and all my information is gonna be down below so you can contact me in any of the forums that you see below. I love to hear from people or just comment right here on YouTube um, down below. I love that. It's great. It's amazing. I will never ever, this is one thing I will always say that I will never do is that, I thought she was going to knock the tripod over. <laughs> um, I will never say don't contact me or, or don't contact me here, but contact me here. It's just, I will, I, I don't know how you don't want to hear from people. I want to hear from people. I just do. 
that's why I'm doing this because I love this community. Anyway, without further ado, this is my yarn. This is my first official colorway um, that I dyed and it's a, oh my, I just, it, it translates so well. I was afraid that the pictures that I took and put up on Instagram weren't um, true to color, but I think this is. It's a light, like the background is kind of like a light, light aqua color. And then there's, yeah, the camera's gonna go do its own thing. But maybe if I hold it here. Um, yeah, with all these great, I'm just gonna take one of them because they're all the same. It's the same colorway, uh, the same dye lot basically. It's just got all these great little things happening in here. Like the way the colors break, which I knew they would do that. Um, and they're skinned. They're not all skinned exactly the same. So that's why they all look a little different. As you know, they're very, they're as similar as possible. Like there's, there's that dark part in all of them. It's just depending on where it got skinned. Cause I'm not a professional yet. Um, but oh my gosh, I love this. I love it. I love it. I love it so much. And like that when you can see more of that, like the orangey, like the rust colors and stuff. And I'm gonna grab one that is not scanned up yet so you can see it in its entirety. So this is on a, I, th I believe it's an 80-20 superwash and polyamide ba um, base. I don't have a name for the base yet, but it's a fingering yarn. Um, well, you are not seeing what I'm seeing. Look at that. <laughs> I love this right here. I love that part. I don't know what it looks like when it's uh, wound into a cake or when it's knit up and I, I really want to steal one for myself, but I'm, you know, I'm going to put them up for sale. I'm so happy with this. Here, just take a look at it. Sorry if I'm squinty. It's actually bright. It's brighter now. So that is it. And this is called Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. My daughter helped me name it because I had a different name for it. And she said, how about this? And I said, that sounds great. So that's one. That's my, I'm really, really, really happy with that colorway. Super excited. And I wrote down the, um, the procedure and the formula and how I did it and just everything about it. It was just like, I'm so happy. I'm so excited and proud of myself. And I don't even care if I don't sell it. I don't care. I love it. So then I did another colorway. I'm going to grab, they're not, these ones are not, um, wound up yet or skeined up. And this one was kind of, it didn't come out exactly what I thought. And this is where the learning process comes in. You know, it's, it's a lot of, um, trial and error. If you don't know what you're doing, I've never taken a class. I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I just have to learn, learn along the way. It's p pretty much my motto in life. I just learn as I go. So it didn't come out exactly what I, what I wanted, but it, I'm happy with the end result. Um, and that in unscanned, it looks like that. I'm really happy with it. Actually. It's really cool. I think this would make an amazing, um, <sighs> featherweight, I think. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like. Oh, I still have the, the yarn on it to keep it separate from when it's in the, um, to keep all the skeins separate when they're in the pot, <laughs> so to speak. So don't mind the turquoise right there, but that's what it looks like in a terrible twisted skein, but terribly twisted skein, but that's what I'm doing right now because, you know, but that is how that looks. And I don't have a name for this colorway just because what I wanted to name it, it didn't come out that way. So, I'm still gonna work on that colorway, what I actually wanna name it, cause it, it makes sense to me. So this one doesn't have a color uh, name yet, but I have four of these available also, also the same um, sock base because it's 80-20 um, uh, superwash and polymide. So it's a sock base yarn, great for socks. Um, I have four of these too. And I think I'm, I'm gonna put these up too because I like the way, I love the way it came out. I'm really happy with that, so. Four of those there's four of each of those that I just showed you and then also four of these and these are still kind of drying this colorway is still drying so it's a little wet um, still and I couldn't show all of them but this one's called 
Hippocras. <laughs> Hippocras. And again, don't mind that. That's just how I keep them separate in the in the pot. But um, there's this. And it looks more pink in the camera. It's more of like a, well, Hippocras. Like it's like a mulled wine colorway. So there's that. And I wanted to grab this game because, oh, there it is. The color, the dye broke in spots and I knew that it would and so it would leave splotches and I knew that it would. That was fine. Um, let me see if I can find it. I just lost it. There's some pretty prominent ones like, I guess it's not that prominent, but like see where the the dye would break or it would get all splotchy. I That was fine. I, I completely expected that so that's totally fine. Here's another spot right there and I kind of like that. So that's Hippocras, and there are four of these, also the same sock base. And I have some more that is rinsing right now, so I can't really show you. It's actually right next to me. Oh, and it's so cool. It is such a great colorway. You'll have to watch next week, because I'll show it to you then. Um, so this will be going up also. So I'm super excited about that. Yeah, so I don't have an Etsy shop that is live or active right now as far as that goes but i will i'm just a big procrastinator you know story of my life but that is just really exciting news i wanted to share that with you and if it doesn't go anywhere it doesn't go anywhere but it's fun for me to do and if i can't imagine that nobody will buy it so <laughs> um but if nobody does buy it that just means i have all that extra yarn that would be awesome can you hear the wind it is so windy outside. See, we live, it's flat, like flat land. There's, there's trees, but it's not like forests and stuff, like, or anything. Um, I just thought of something funny, which I'll share in a second. But yeah, it is so, so the wind just comes right across and it's just so windy out here. I also wondered if you could hear my cat in the litter box. If you heard if you heard some weird sounds a few minutes ago that was my cat in the litter box she was playing apparently so you might be wondering I'm gonna I won't this won't be too long but um so if you follow me for the last um, let's see nine months yeah nine months I we we've we moved out to the country and we live you probably know this <laughs> it just sounds weird to say it because there's no shame in it we live in an RV like a park model RV it's kind of hard for people to understand it's not a mobile home it's my cat is playing with nothing it's not a mobile home or anything like that it's an actual RV like a long RV with bump outs and or just one bump out which is where I am right now um, not it's not a camper uh, we call it the trailer but <laughs> Um, it's an RV. It's a park model RV. It's got two bedrooms, um, a little kitchen. It's got everything you need, running water and all that stuff, electricity, heat, all, internet, everything, TV, all that stuff, um, bathroom, <laughs> everything you need. But it's really, really tiny. And there's three of us and two cats living here. And it, um, we did pretty good. We, we went, we downsized from a three bedroom, like, I want to say 1900 square foot condo that had a garage and a finished basement in addition to the three, be the three bedrooms, like just a huge, like four level townhouse condo that we rented and we downsized two bathrooms. We downsized to this. And that was the first time in my life I had had two bathrooms, which was really cool. Um, now it's the simple things in life and we downsized to this we got rid of all our furniture all of our sh crap and just like everything pretty much everything except for my yarn and my cooking stuff yeah so yeah we have nothing if we well no we don't have nothing we have everything if we moved into an apartment or a house right now um, we would need to buy beds um, dressers for my husband and I, um, a, an office for my husband, like a desk and everything, um, a kitchen set, like a dining set, um, bookshelves, like storage and stuff. So we have just our stuff and even our stuff, like the cluttery stuff is downsized like enormously. 
because we live in this little little home it's I think it's about 350 square feet so we would have more space if I didn't cook and I didn't knit <laughs> because I cook we eat in a lot um, not to say that we don't ever eat out because we do but we there's nothing near us anyway so it's not as easy to just go pick up some takeout food so we I cook a lot so we have a lot of ingredients and because we don't eat we eat plant-based then I need even more ingredients because I need to make my own mock meat or my own cheese or you know stuff like that so I have like all the ingredients like stuff that people don't normally have in their kitchen or in their pantry or whatever so my pantry space is pared down quite a bit but like everything that's in it is pared down quite a bit but you know there's three of us we eat we eat a lot of food like there's always eating happening here so I have a lot of food here and that takes up a lot of space I don't even have a lot of like dishes or anything everything's really simple like a setting of like four cups um, unfortunately we use paper plates but we recycle them and in the in the summer or in the better weather, we um, burn, we can burn them in the fire because they're paper. They're not the styrofoam or plastic or anything. They're just the paper. They're great fire starters. But we do use paper plates just to save on water, which I will get to. Um, so we don't have a lot of like dishes and plates and da 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 and all that stuff. But like I have big things like a slow cooker. I have a rice maker. I have my KitchenAid mixer. We have a kettle for tea and coffee. Um, what else do I have? I'm looking in my closet shelves oh a ninja that has the food processor and the blender because I use that for everything so we have all that those things and they take up space a, a waffle maker oh and a convection oven because we don't have a microwave we choose not to we, I haven't used a microwave in years um, and then a few pots and pans I don't even have a pots and pans set just because I know exactly what we need and I, I only have on hand what we need, so I don't have like five different pots in the same size, you know, whatever. And my baking stuff, I don't bake really that much, but any cooking, like I have nesting bowls and yeah, so I have, you know, we're not like, I'm not a simple cook. I, I cook a lot of like different things that use a lot of different ingredients and anyway, that takes up a lot of room and yarn. <laughs> yarn, it just, I have a whole section over here, maybe someday I will record it because I follow a lot of other RVers people who live in RVs and they travel we don't travel we do it just to save money actually because we just we don't travel but um, that's why we're in the RV is to save money <laughs> um, anyway the other RV people that I follow RV life and all that stuff they when I look at their RVs they're so pretty and perfect and staged and they all have they're like oh yeah we got three kids living here and I'm like I'm like, how, how do you do that? I, I have one kid and it, it's not mess, it, it's not dirty. It's messy though and disorganized and there's stuff and we live here and I don't know how they do that. Like we need stuff. So there's just, I feel like there's just stuff everywhere and there pretty much is. And it's, it's, it's hard on the eyes sometimes. I do have to clean up because I was just cooking. But anyway, um, I have a whole dye area over here. I took, we, we, we um, sacrificed a good area so that I could do dyeing. Um, I don't know how big it is, maybe six feet by four feet, which really isn't a lot of space to dye, but I make do. And it's, um, yeah, you, you gotta do what you gotta do. But I don't know really where I was going with this. But I, oh, I think I was talking, what I was, I was telling you about the RV because of the dyeing. And you might wonder like how I do that and stuff, but especially with water being an issue because we do have running water, but it's um, in a holding tank. So it only holds, I think 66 gallons at a time and we have to fill it up every few days, which isn't a big deal. It's a little bit of a process, just not a big deal. So um, water and electricity is an issue and electricity is only an issue because this thing can be screaming. I don't know the amps and the wattage and all that stuff, but if you have an oil heater on and then you have the toaster on and you have the kettle on, the th everything will just just blow. It'll blow a breaker. So we have to be really careful about that. So with the, um, I don't use my gas stove to, to, um, to heat the water. I use a, like a little single burner, a portable electric burner. And that takes up a, a lot of electricity. Oh, and the dehumidifier. If, I don't know if you can see the windows getting a little foggy right here. Um, so we have to keep the dehumidifier on a lot and that takes up a lot of amps. So 
it's a little bit of a struggle uh, or challenge, not a struggle, a challenge to die in the trailer. <laughs> but it's an interesting story and we're not going to be here forever. We probably won't even be here that much longer. I'm not really sure what we're going to do, but we've been able to get some, some of our, uh, I'm not going to use that word, some of our crap together so that we can, you know, live our life. Anyway, maybe, I don't know. So you, the, the thing is, is it's an interesting story as to where I started. I have no idea. I don't have these grandiose plans of like being this huge hand dyer, indie dyer, whatever. I'm not like going to be selling out and having shop updates. It's just for fun. And well, it's a little bit more for fun because it's like, it is definitely something that people want is yarn hand dyed yarn, indie dyed yarn. And there's a, there's a big market for it right now. And I have the time, I have the talent. I don't know if you'd call it talent, but I can do it. I have the money to be able to invest in it. And um, yeah, it's just something to try out. And if it does get big, it gets big. And it's a fun little story just to tell from the beginning. Like I started dying in a tin beast. Um, that sounds weird, but yeah. So I'm dying in a in an RV, a trailer RV. And um, yeah, if you have any questions about the RV, I would love to answer any questions you might have. Um, they could be embarrassing questions. <laughs> I don't care, I'll probably answer them for you. Um, it's an interesting, um, I have fuzz in my mouth. It's an interesting journey that we are on, actually. It's not, no, I don't think a lot of people would do this. I'm surprised we're doing it, but we like to try everything, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm just rambling, but that is a little bit about that. And I think I wanted to share look at my notes. I think that's what I wanted to share about that. But yeah, like I said, if you have any questions about that, let me know. <laughs> uh, that wasn't too bad, I guess. I think I did spend a lot of time talking about that. But anyway, um, yeah, I would love to hear from you, and thanks for spending a few minutes listening to me talk to my phone, and let's make it worthwhile, and give me a thumbs up, or whatever. You don't have to do that. I don't like to ask for that, um, but talk to me. I would love to hear from you, um, yeah, and just let me know what you are knitting, what you plan on knitting, what you finished, um, share any podcasters you think I should watch. Um, I feel like my face is really serious. Ugh, sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just rambling right now. All right. I'm going to let you go and I hope that you have fun knitting and stay classy. Yeah. Bye. It's podcast day. It's podcast day. It's podcast day. Uh, the lighting I think is better. Surprisingly easy to set up this time. Today is Wednesday, January 4th, 15th. Hi, welcome to Inspired. It's podcast day. Guys, today is Wednesday, January 15th. Why don't I check on this? It's Wednesday, January 14, 15, 2019, and it's podcast day. Welcome to the Wild Language. It's podcast day. It's podcast day. Don't talk weird. Why are you playing with your hair?